Hello, I'm John Martinka, and I'm the escape artist as I help people escape their job for business ownership or escape that business when it's time for their next great adventure in life. And with me today is Jerry Carlton with MX Law in both the Seattle and Portland markets. Jerry is an M&A specialist, and I welcome you here, Jerry. My Thank first you. question is not related to buy sell, but what are you seeing out there with your clients given COVID and you know, what are your existing business clients doing, looking like, suffering, thriving, et cetera? Sure. Yeah, we're, we're seeing quite a range right now, as you can imagine, with the mm -hmm. global chaos that's happening. Uh, I've got clients on one hand that are failing uh, and it's, it can be really sad. People who are laying people off that they've worked with for decades. Uh, on the other hand, I've got clients that are printing money right now that are taking advantage of opportunities that just did not exist before COVID happened. You know, some have seen COVID as an accelerant uh, and it's just sped them up. Others have found whole new business opportunities within it, um, but it's just fascinating. And it's quite a tightrope walking between those two things. And sometimes the margin of difference between the two is just so slim and can be fascinating. I'll, I'll give you one example. Two clients, similar stage, both online platforms. One of them was a platform for booking online dine-in reservations. The other one was a platform for booking takeout orders. The dine-in reservations total failure, even though they got out to a good start, the online pickup, they couldn't have imagined that all of a sudden all food would be online pickup. Uh, it was such an accelerant. Uh, they're, they're doing amazing. Okay. So uh, any specific business types you've done seem to do well during COVID and then would, it, would you say it's sustainable or is it a spike? Sure. It's, it's both. And, and the ones I've seen done well, I mean, there's the online platform I just mentioned, uh, I'm watching things like hand sanitizer and soap do incredibly well right now. Alcohol in general uh, has been doing well as long as it has solid distribution. Uh, virtual meeting software, incredibly well. Online learning is doing incredibly well. Uh, and then video games, the gaming space is hot right now. Uh, and sometimes it's taken a pivot and I think this gets to what's sustainable versus you know, what's a spike. You know, I'll give you two examples. One client was in the food manufacturing space saw the opportunity was hand, with hand sanitizer, stopped the food, started producing hand sanitizer. First PO was $16 million. Next PO after that was $20 million. Uh, it was amazing. Hand sanitizer then started to soften. They had to get right back to what they were doing before. Mm -hmm. uh, another example, a client in the fabric space, their average order size might've been in the tens of thousands of dollars. This happened, they were able to pivot to PPE, started making gowns and masks and their first PO out of the gate since that pivot was $9 million. Uh, that one has yet to soften, but both because they pivoted, they still have their core business that they can go back to. Uh, I can see that if they had gone all in and not preserve their ability to go back to their core business, there could equally be a problem as things soften up. Okay. So on to uh, buy, sell, M&A, something that affects both of our businesses, uh, with you being an M&A attorney and I'm an intermediary. Uh, I've been using the, the phrase when people ask, when do you think a, someone's going to sell their business if it's been hurt, whether it's a little bit or a little more than a little bit, that when the pain of rebuilding is greater than the pain of selling at a price less than they were hoping for, they will sell it for that little lower price. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you, what do you think out, what's going to happen out there with these businesses, the owners not wanting to go through it again? Uh, you think there's going to be a rush to sell? You think it's no big deal? No, unfortunately, I already have seen the rush to sell start. Uh, and it has been a bit of a case-by-case -case scenario each time. But I, I, did, I have seen two common factors come together when a business decides to just sell or even close uh, instead of keep trying. One, if they have in -person, an in-person consumer business. There's just too much uncertainty. Uh, I had one round of clients. They they waited out the first quarantine, uh, then tried to open back up. Now further uncertainty of how the open up is going to happen, and even going backwards on that, they've decided to close or sell. The other has just been on debt load. Uh, clients that have been leveraged that can't meet their debt obligations. That's been a reason that people are selling or closing. Uh, I've seen a lot of transactions right now that have been assumption of debt deals that we would have never dreamed would have happened prior to COVID. Okay. Well, that actually covers one of my 
future questions, which is you see changes in deal structures, and that's one of them. Oh, it's it's been dramatic. I mean, the the assumption of debt deals. I, from my experience, the opportunistic type deals broke out early in this downswing. Uh, in prior downswings, it took a little while for the market to to perform poorly before the opportunistic deals really broke out. But this one, they they started quickly, and assumption of debt deals have been pretty big. I will say though, one. I find fascinating deal structure change that has happened because of all of this. In smaller deals, I'm seeing stock sales primarily instead of asset sales. And it's because of the stimulus package that was rolled out in the form of the PPP. Buyers want to preserve the forgivability of the PPP loan that these sellers are holding. So if they did an asset sale, they might hurt the forgivability of it. Instead, they're actually buying the stock. So usually the sellers in smaller deals have to negotiate pretty hard to get a stock sale. Now it's being handed to them. So really? That's absolutely fascinating. That is interesting. And you're the first person I talked to that has said that. Interesting. So that's a big change because of COVID. And what I also heard from you is that what COVID has done compared to past crises, crises uh, is that it's accelerated the timeline. It's more like uh, the hockey stick of movement rather than slow and steady. Yep, absolutely. I mean, I was shocked. We had the things come to a screeching halt in mid, mid-March, of course, then some time focused internally as people were making strategic moves, but then the opportunistic deals broke out by the end of April. Uh, would you say the opportunistic deals are mostly another company buying them or an individual? Uh, I've seen a good mix of both. You know, some of my buyer side clients are individuals that have cash and want to get back in the game or want to own and run their own business. And they're just out deal shopping right now. Uh, but companies making moves is definitely a big part of it too. I'm watching people on the buy side, look at their competitors, see who's having a hard time and go in and, and buy for bargain prices. Yeah, I agree. And that's, I think, where the Hurt business is, that's their savior, shall we say. I, I've got three clients right now who are, we want to grow by acquisition. We want people in our, in our industry. Yeah. We're seeing some opportunity, you know, not to be bottom feeders, but to get, get a, a better deal than they might've got a year ago and still be helping that other company. And, and that's a key part. I'll tell you, I had a deal we closed recently where I was feeling a little depressed about the deal that my client got. It was on the sales side. It was a business that was very strong prior to this whole thing breaking out. It was an assumption of debt deal. There, there wasn't a lot of value that changed hands other than that. And my client was the one to give me a pep talk saying how thankful they were that the deal came together. They really did need to get out of the debt load. And they were so excited that their employees got the chance to continue in their jobs. So that they were thankful for the transaction, even though the deal was not what we would have anticipated beginning of the year. Okay. So has legal due diligence changed due to COVID? Yes. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, I, I'm watching a lot of uh, a lot of changes, a lot of updates happening in the in the online diligence space. So a lot of virtual platforms that are making moves to be more robust. Uh, I'm watching a particular interest in leases right now, as you can imagine, a buyer and seller are trying to see where the flexibility is as it relates to office space. Uh, and then I'm watching things just happen fast, you know, especially on these deals that are more crisis mode. They need the deal to close quickly. So I'm watching a much more streamlined diligence process. I mean, the fastest one we've had this year so far, term sheet was signed on a Tuesday, deal closed on a Friday. Wow. Yeah, it was fast. Okay. So you know, as you, you mentioned to work with buyers, uh, and I'm going to finish up by asking you, have you seen your buyer clients doing anything differently? Other, you know, let's take out the assumption of debt kind of deals. And the same thing for sellers. And then if you have any other general comments you would like to add for people watching this, uh, go for it. Sure. Yeah, no, the, the buy side, it, it has been really a focus on a COVID discount, if you will. Uh, I've had some deals come together or a potential deal come together where the company would have checked all their boxes before COVID, uh, but they didn't feel like it was enough of a bargain based on the current market. And so they would keep looking instead of take it. I've seen the flip side of that coin for the sellers where they're taking deals they never would have before, but again, are thankful uh, that the transactions go. And then in general, I mean, I, I've been focusing on the smaller transactions with these comments, but we're watching it across the whole range. Uh, I think last week was a good example. We had 
the smallest deal that we had seen that week where it was an assumption of debt deal of just around a hundred thousand dollars, tiny little deal, uh, all the way up to a gaming deal that was over 300 million. Uh, so even in the current environment, there's still some big dollar deals happening too, but a lot of strategy going into it. Okay. Any final comments, Jerry? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, it's, Thankfully, because of COVID, uh, transactions are still happening. So I, my heart hurts for people whose industries are just completely stopped right now. Uh, I'm very fortunate to be in a spot where we're still needed. Yeah, I, I feel the same way that, yes, I, uh, one of my clients, you know, I'll, share, I'll just share as we finish up, we were doing some exit planning and mm -hmm. her, her customers uh, got shut down, the whole industry. Well, it, no more exit planning, it's survival planning. And, uh, and I'm just glad that, you know, that you and I and others are there to help these people and uh, for whatever they want to achieve. So thank you much for taking the time. And uh, I really appreciate it.